For the last several months, this Republican primary for the United States Senate in Wisconsin has been going on. And unlike just about everybody else, I don't have any hidden agendas here. When I have an agenda, it's not hidden. I tell you what my agenda is. I have said that I think that the field of candidates that the Republicans have here is unbelievably strong. I've also said that I personally have not decided who I'm going to vote for, and therefore right now I'm supporting no one. And I was going to try to use my show to honestly cover the race, help give you the information that you need, particularly those of you who intend to vote in the election. At this point, some people think I'm in the bag for Fitzgerald. Others say that I'm in the bag for Newman. Some say I'm in the bag for Tommy. And some people say I'm in the bag for Hubdi. Whatever. I think if you listen to my comments, I have bent over backwards to try to be fair to all of the candidates in terms of how many times they've appeared on the program, the things that I focused on are covered, and so on. It is time for me to change my tone. Because there are a couple of things that need to be said about Eric Hovde, the candidate who sort of emerged from nowhere and has spent millions of dollars trying to persuade Wisconsin Republicans to choose him as their candidate for the United States Senate. Hovde's being a newcomer has both strengths and positives and negatives. The positives are that he can define himself And nobody has any preconceived notions of him. The negatives are, because people don't have any preconceived notions of him, other people can try to define him. All we really know about him is what what he's been saying in his ads, saying in interviews, and so on. Again, this presents both positives and negatives for Hovde and his campaign. He is an open book. And I think he's been rightly viewed with suspicion because here's this guy who pops back into Wisconsin, now settles in Madison of all places, and says, I'm a conservative and I want to be United States Senator. Of course there's reasons to be suspicious of that. And I think that that's the reason he's been held to a higher standard and has been asked a lot of tough questions about where he stands on the issues, what his background is, and so on. All of that being said, It's time for me to weigh in and say something here. That is that Eric Hovde is being lied about. And the lies are being told by two groups in particular, or two entities in particular. Tommy Thompson and his campaign, and the national arm of the Club for Growth. Now, I do want to pause for a moment to mention that the Club for Growth is a national organization that has state chapters. The Wisconsin chapter of the Club for Growth is not involved in the anti-Hubdy campaign, the anti-Tommy Thompson campaign. The national arm of the Club for Growth is all in for Mark Newman. So in my comments here about Club for Growth, I'm referring to the national arm of the Club for Growth and not the people who work in the Wisconsin body, which is a sort of separate organization. Paul, do you have that ad that I cherry-picked out for you earlier? This is an ad that is being run right now on this station and many others by the Tommy Thompson campaign. Eric Hovde gave money to Jim Doyle's campaign against Scott Walker. What's Hovde's new excuse? Yes, I made a contribution back in 2005. Stop the ad. A very... Now, I know what Tommy Thompson and his campaign is doing there. They're being cute. They're being clever. But they are trying to mislead people. When did Jim Doyle run against Scott Walker? Scott Walker ran for governor of Wisconsin in 2010 against Tom Barrett. And before that, he ran in a primary against Mark Newman. When Eric Hubde made his contribution which he clearly has had a hard time explaining, to Jim Doyle, it was in 2005. Now, the following is true. 
In 2005, Scott Walker was considering running for the Republican nomination for governor. You'll recall that for a time, both he and Mark Green were in the race. And I suppose the Thompson campaign can claim somehow that that's what the ad was about, but we all know that Scott Walker was not yet then the opponent to Jim Doyle, and in fact, he never became the opponent to Jim Doyle. Scott dropped out of the race months and months and months before the election. At best, the Thompson ad is an attempt to trick people by stretching the facts. That's at best. And we know why he's doing it. He's doing it because right now Scott Walker is a god to Wisconsin Republicans. Everyone's trying to attach themselves to Scott Walker. So we throw in Jim Doyle's campaign against Jim Doyle, Jim Doyle's campaign against Scott Walker. It's a cute little trick. But the Republican voters of Wisconsin deserve better. This is the kind of crap the Democrats pull. Twist, stretch, exaggerate, and try to draw a conclusion that isn't the fact. When it goes on in the Senate race, I think I have an obligation to tell you about it. I did today contact the Thompson campaign and asked them about this allegation, and I got a response for which the word lame isn't sufficient. They point out a bunch of things, all of which, by the way, are factual. That the day that the, the contribution was made by Eric Hubdy to Jim Doyle was the same day that Jim Doyle vetoed property tax relief, relief legislation in Wisconsin. That's true. It's also true that Scott Walker was men of the, one of the many, many, many people in Wisconsin that supported that legislation. Running an ad saying that Hubdy gave the, ad on the, gave the money on the same day that Jim Doyle vetoed property tax relief legislation would be accurate. But that's not what the ad says. The ad implies that Jim Doyle was running against Scott Walker when the contribution was made, and that's not true. It is an attempt to mislead you. If I'm going to sit here and comment on this race, and something is going to be exaggerated and distorted this badly, and I know it, what does it say about me if I don't bring it up? Tommy Thompson is a revered figure in Wisconsin Republican circles. While some people don't like him, the fact of the matter is is that he is somebody who took us out of the wilderness in the mid-1980s. His governorship was brilliant. Was it, was it flawed? Of course it was flawed. Scott Walker's governorship is going to have flaws. But it was a brilliant governorship that helped fix this state in many areas. Tommy Thompson fixed the welfare magnet status that we had. Tommy Thompson has liberated thousands of kids from terrible schools by inventing school choice. Tommy Thompson helped guide through the first big property tax relief bill that we ever had. He's conducted himself with incredible dignity and decency throughout his career, and I like him. He is being ill-served by staffers who have decided to try to trash Eric Hovde with a bunch of statements that aren't true. Does Tommy Thompson really want to go out this way? Does he want to run what may well be his last campaign for public office by being dishonest about other Republicans here in Wisconsin? Now to the Club for Growth. An organization that I have tremendous respect for, both in Wisconsin and nationally. The Club for Growth is an organization that specifically sets out to promote conservatives within the Republican Party. They, like me, have been dedicated for years to weed out the rhinos, Republicans in name only. 
they have attempted to force conservative Republican politicians to adhere to conservative values. They've gone after the rhinos and back conservatives in Republican primaries, all of which I applaud and support. In that vein, they are supporting Mark Newman for Senate because they believe Mark is the most conservative candidate running. In doing so, however, they're making statements about the other candidates, and in the case of Eric Hubdy, they are attempting to mislead people. I'm holding in my hands a mass email that was sent out by the Club for Growth. It was passed along today, passed along to me by one of the people who received it. It's signed by Chris Chicola, who's the national president of the Club for Growth. I'm going to share it with you. When the club's PAC first endorsed, club's PAC, the PAC, of course, is political action money, first endorsed former Congressman Mark Newman in the Wisconsin Senate race, the race appeared as if it were going to be an uphill battle against former Governor Tommy Thompson. However, thanks in large part to the generosity of club members like you, Thompson's stronghold on this race has been consistently weakening for the last several months, and while Thompson still holds a slight lead in the polls, the margin is narrowing and many think he is no longer the threat he once was. And while we're pleased with the progress that we've been able to make by exposing Thompson for the rhino he really is, it's not time to celebrate just yet. Because there is another very real threat to the economic conservative principles you and I hold dear, Eric Hovde. Hovde, the latecomer to the Wisconsin Republican primary, is attempting to position himself as the Washington outsider, which, considering he has lived in Washington, D.C. for the past 25 years, is a small stretch to say the least. So far... This rhetoric is defensible, but it goes on. But where Hubdi's lived for the past quarter century is of less concern than where he stands on pro-growth issues. Hubdi has gone on the record in support of market-distorting energy subsidies, parts of Obama's stimulus, and he even supports the principle behind Obama's Buffett rule that calls for higher taxes on the so-called wealthy. I interviewed on my own program... Eric Hovde at length on this issue, and specifically on the Buffett ish on the Buffett rule. He has made it clear that he thinks that the Buffett rule is terrible public policy and opposes it. He has explained the statement that he made, in which five words were pulled out of a larger sentence in which he said, I would not have a problem with higher taxes on people like me. And he's explained that position in a way that anyone, including for the club, including the Club for Growth, can understand. To pull five words out of a larger statement that was made in a television interview several years ago in improper context, and then use those words to contradict what the guy has been saying on the campaign trail for months is BS. And I'll tell you what else is BS, Club for Growth. And that is labeling a conservative a rhino when he's not. If the Club for Growth is committed to conservative principles, I would think it would be okay with either Newman or Fitzgerald or Hovde, all of whom are more conservative than Tommy. Although, as I've said, I suspect that on any of the issues that will be in front of the United States Senate the next two years, All four of them would vote the same way 98% of the time. The Club for Growth claims that it's committed to electing conservatives in Republican primaries. They know damn well Eric Hubdi's a conservative. I've been following his campaign closely here. And as you know, I've been suspicious of Hubdi. But without any evidence to the contrary... You've got to go on a, take a person's positions on the basis of what he says they are. Five words out of context, doesn't Trump, six months on the campaign trail, lengthy position papers, and pretty good grilling from a pretty tough interviewer, me, on this very issue. The Club for Growth knows that Eric Hovde doesn't support the Buffett rule. But it's sending out an email to its members here in Wisconsin today, lying about that, claiming he does. 
I am not endorsing Eric Hovde. That's not what this segment is about. What I am doing is calling out the people who are lying about him. Now, that's a strong word. We all know that in politics, you spin and exaggerate things. The Club for Growth says he supports the Buffett rule. He doesn't. If you're saying someone takes a position that they aren't, in fact, taking, is that not a lie? With regard to the Tommy Thompson ad, the gratuitous adding of the word Scott Walker to an otherwise acceptable ad about Eric's contribution is, if not a lie, at best an attempt to mislead people. We should demand better of the Thompson campaign. And they should redo the ad so they stop trying to con and fool Wisconsin Republican voters. And Tommy himself should call on his staff members to run a campaign more fitting to the style of politics that he's shown his entire career. Tommy Thompson is better than this. I frankly don't even know why the Thompson campaign is trashing Hubdy as badly as they are. They've had Mark Newman and the Club for Growth doing their dirty work for them. Nonetheless, they've made that decision and they have the right to do it. This is not to say that Hubdy hasn't made some exaggerations in his own ads and talking about the records of his opponents. He has. And I've commented on them and will continue to do so in the future. I've said that he has distorted Tommy Thompson's record as governor by counting as spending some tax cuts that the governor imposed as governor. I've called him on that. But these latest claims about Hovde from the Club for Growth on the Buffett Rule and from Tommy Thompson on the campaign contribution to Jim Doyle are flat out inaccurate and wrong. Furthermore, in the case of the Thompson ad, since he's using my program as a means to dispense this con, this exaggeration, this distortion, I'm going to call him out. I haven't made a decision on this, but I'm considering every time the ad runs coming on after the break to point out to the audience that, hey, by the way, even though Tommy's ad says so, Jim Doyle never ran against Scott Walker. Wouldn't be hard for them to recut the ad. All they have to do is take out the two words that aren't true. Now, I'm sure right now the Hubdi people are listening to this and they're flipping cartwheels. Mark Belling's calling out as liars the attacks on us. There's two and a half weeks left in this campaign, and I'll tell Eric's campaign as well. If you pull the same crap on your opponents that is being pulled on you, I'm going to call you out on it too. I'm not trying to be the politifact here of the radio, the thing in the newspaper. Well, this is a lie, this is a lie, this is a lie. What I am attempting to do, and will try to continue to do right through the election in two and a half weeks is cover this race fairly and help you understand who these candidates are and what their positions on the issues are. As of airtime, I hadn't received any kind of a commitment from the Thompson campaign to stop running this distorted ad. Mark Newman has also made some charges about Eric Hovde in his advertising. So far, the charges haven't risen to the level of being as distorted as the Thompson and the Club for Growth allegations. But he's getting close. These candidates are running against one another. There's no problem with calling out problems that you have in their past records or their past statements. I just am going to insist that you be accurate about it and you not try to mislead people. 
One of the problems here is that all four of these are strong candidates, and there aren't many negatives on any of them. So what you're, what, what's happening here is that things are being twisted and distorted. I understand that negative campaigning is part of the process, that you're not only trying to convince people to vote for you, you're trying to convince them not to vote for someone else. But I don't want the winner of this nomination to be so beaten up by this process that Tammy Baldwin and the Democrats just finish it off by stomping on whomever the winner is. And that's the kind of thing that happens when people start telling a bunch of whoppers about one another. I call right now on the Thompson campaign to stop running its ad. And I call on Mark Newman to ask his friends at the Club for Growth, which has endorsed him, to stop lying about Eric Hovde. And saying that he supports things that he doesn't support. Now, when I had Hovde on the program a couple of days ago, I asked him about just about all of these things that he's been under fire for. There were some weaknesses in his answers. In fact, his weakest response is on this very political contribution to Doyle. After now hearing his responses for a couple of months, I still don't know what it is. Does he not remember it? Was he pressured by Doyle? Whatever. And you certainly have every right to question his response on that. I'm merely saying that that doesn't give another candidate's campaign the right to say that that donation was something that it wasn't. It wasn't a donation against Scott Walker. And you have to stretch the truth so far that the T and the H are 18 miles apart in order to be able to make that claim, and the Thompson people know it. What do they think they're dealing with here? Wisconsin Republicans have been through a year and a half of lies and attacks from the unions, the Democrats, the Barrett people, Barack Obama, and everybody else out there trying to distort Scott Walker. Do they not think that we've kind of been able to pick up on crap? Do they not think that people like myself are going to call them out when they start lying on people who are running for this Senate nomination? Clean it up! Now the people who are supporting Tommy Thompson will be furious with me for this segment. Probably the people who support Mark Newman are going to be furious with me for this segment. And the people who support Hubdi are going to be very, very elated that I did the segment. Again, I'm just telling you this is coming without any agenda whatsoever. I don't know who I'm going to vote for, and I could see myself either voting for Thompson or Newman. Both are possible. Because you judge a candidate on any number of issues, including the ability to beat Tammy Baldwin. I'm just saying, when you run an ad saying somebody gave money to a guy that was running against Scott Walker when he wasn't running against Scott Walker, and you're doing that to distort people's perception of a guy who is offering himself up as a conservative running on conservative principles to represent our state in the United States Senate, you deserved to be you deserve to be called out on it. And that's all I'm doing here. I'm calling out Thompson and his campaign and I'm calling out the club for growth. And I'm telling my audience that my fair evaluation of these two attacks is is that they are not true claims. They are untrue. In the case of the club for growth rise to the level of a lie in the case of the Thompson campaign come very very close to that word lie. Now, maybe you disagree with me. Maybe your own biases or agenda get in the way. But to say that in 2005, when Eric Hubdy gave that campaign, it was to Jim Doyle because he was, when he was running against Scott Walker, campaigning against Scott Walker is not true. Do you have that ad, that ad in there? Play it again. Eric Hubdy gave money to Jim Doyle's campaign against Scott Walker. What crap? Stop What's it. Hubdy? To Jim Doyle's campaign against Scott Walker. No, he gave money to Jim Doyle's campaign for governor. In 2005, when Jim Doyle didn't know who his Republican opponent was going to be, which, by the way, turned out to be Mark Rain. But saying his campaign for governor or campaign against Mark Rain wouldn't allow Tommy to wrap himself around Scott Walker. 
Tommy had a chance to wrap himself around Scott Walker, and that would have been to come back to Wisconsin a few times while Walker was under siege from the unions here, which he didn't do. So now he's a Tommy come lately to the I love Scott Walker crowd in this ad. And I understand that that's exactly why they're doing it. And I understand that in most states, you'd probably be able to get away with it. Unfortunately, here you're trying to get away with it with Wisconsin Republican voters who've been through a whole lot here, and you're trying to get away with it in a state where I do my show. And yes, that is the difference. And the kind of coverage you heard here is the kind of coverage you can expect from me over the next two and a half weeks in this campaign if any more of this garbage is directed at any of the four candidates. Criticize your opponents, that's fine, that's fair game, but tell the truth when you do it. Well, it sounds like you're now leaning to Hubdi. I know what it might sound like. At some point, I am going to have to make up my mind here. I, by the way, am now of the opinion that Eric Hovde is a conservative. He has persuaded me of that. That doesn't mean he's the right candidate for the Senate. There's other weaknesses that he has as a campaigner that I've articulated. And I'm not sure he's the strongest one to beat Tammy Baldwin. But he has persuaded me that he is the real deal with conservative beliefs, passionately held, and is able to defend them in an eloquent way. And I have always found that the people who pose as conservatives are the ones who are never able to argue the case. Hubdi is able to argue the case, and you only are able to do that when you truly believe the case you're arguing. I will again call on the Thompson campaign and the Club for Growth to retract the allegations they're made against, they've made against Hovde, and they run the risk of me continuing to call them out for their distortions or outright lies if they continue to do it.